Hey guys, welcome back to Home Door, and in this episode we are going to continue on with the IMS series on Archie here and uh, in this episode we're going to be tackling the rear main seal and the clutch. All right, so the next job is to replace this uh, rear main seal. Now, this is the thing that has been leaking. I was pretty sure, I mean, there was fresh oil on the bottom of it when, uh, when I opened it up. Everything else was caked on, and you could sort of see where it was leaking out just on this edge here. So uh, I'm pretty sure this is toast and uh, definitely needs to be replaced. Now, I measured it, and um, the way you can tell, the original, be the original seals and the ones that have actually had issues are the, um, the ones when you measure from this face of the... Um, uh, of the end of the crank uh, to the uh, face of the seal is 11 millimeters and apparently the newer ones uh, they push it back a bit further into about 13 millimeters I think the seal is a bit narrower or something but uh, either way I've made a tool before I've taken this one off so that I can um, press the new one on and basically how I'm going to do it is uh, this is just a this is just a PVC fitting for a three inch downpipe or something I think uh, connector um, and what I've done is uh, drilled holes in it so that it'll actually fit over the top of the uh, of the crank, and then using the crank bolts and uh, just some some sockets um, to give it as active spaces. I'm going to uh, sit these on and uh, and bolt bolt it up. <laughs> And I'll be able to go round and bolt it up like that and um, and check the measurements and make sure that it's the right distance in. So as I press it in, I can press it in slowly and evenly and get it exactly right all the way around. That's the plan. So um, let's now uh, try and pull this one out. And to do that, I actually have to drill a hole no more than five millimeters deep into the seal itself. Put a screw in there and then just lever out from the screw. So that's the... Um, that's what I'm going to do now. Yay! Okay, so I've got my drill ready to drill my hole into my rear main seal. Um, a little tip, if you're going to uh, try and drill to a certain depth, a good way to do it is with a piece of tape. As you can see there, I've actually measured out my 5mm and I've left the tape as a tab hanging off the end. So when it spins around, you can actually see it flapping and actually see exactly where it's getting to um, when you're down to the spot. So let's drill out the bit. That's blah, 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 blah. Let's drill a hole in my rear main seal. Oh. All right, that came out. It took a little bit of effort, but wasn't too bad. Um, now I've got it out. I've got to go around and clean everything thoroughly with a lint-free cloth. I want to make sure that it is perfectly clean. Um, it's recommended not to use any sealant of any kind on this uh, on this bearing. You just want to basically put it in dry and uh, it will seal itself. But you've got to make sure you don't touch the outsides of it. Don't mess it up because um, it could affect the seal. So I'm going to clean this up now and see if we can install it. All right, that's nice and clean. Um, it's as clean as I'm going to get it. So let's uh, open this up and... Um, be very careful in handling it and getting it uh, into place. All right, finally something went right, and that actually worked quite well. I had to um, uh, tap it in to start with because um, I didn't have enough depth of bolt to, with the, the way I'd set it up, so I needed to sort of get it close to start with, and then I could just go around. I ended up drilling um, eight holes, so four holes for bolts and four holes for um, putting in the verniers, and basically what I was doing is 
Uh, I, I zeroed my verniers at the width of my piece because the, um, the distance from this top edge to the edge of the seal was going to be the same every time. And then I, um, I just poked through the hole to the same edge. I just poked through the hole uh, to the same edge and measured the depth but from the face of the crank up to the, uh, the edge of the, this piece. So that gave me like a negative number, but negative um, 13 millimeters, which is what I wanted. So that is now in, sealed, done, 13 millimeters. <sighs> Time to start buttoning it all back up again, finally. All right, so uh, that means doing this all basically in the reverse of what I did before. So first things first is the timing chain extensions go back in again. Um, I've actually got a, uh, a new washer, a new seal for them. So I'm gonna ch change the washer in the, um, uh, and the o-ring and uh, stick them back in. All right, well, the chain tensions are all in and they're all being talked up to 80 Newton meters, so they're all back in again. I managed to reinstall uh, the air conditioning compressor. Um, that was a real pain to get out the first time, but once I knew where the, uh, the third bolt was, which is sort of basically straight in the center at the top at the back, um, it's actually not that hard to get, on, get onto once you know where it is. Um, you just can't see it. Um, I managed to get that out and you can sort of you can sort of move the hoses and wriggle it and get it out without having to remove anything else And I managed to put it back in pretty easily. So that was a good um, Learning curve. I've, uh, I've learned that now um, I will note that there is some uh, oil leaking on top of the engine um, which might be um, oil air separator or it might be the um, uh, Oil pressure sender. I've heard that can be an issue as well um, I'm going to uh, have a look, but I'm going to be doing this again soon enough. Um, I am going to be coming back and changing this bearing quite soon. Um, so um, I will probably just bolt it back up again because this is my daily driver. I need to get it back on the road. Uh, so let's go now. And uh, the next thing to do is we need to unlock the engine, unlock the cams, and make sure that the, um, the, the slots of the cams haven't moved at all because if they have and it's jumped the tooth, the cams jump the tooth then that can be catastrophic engine failure and that's game over so we need to make sure that they're still where they're supposed to be well the cam uh, is still not sitting nice and vertical looking good so i'm going to put a new cap in there and another one up the top and there we go, all sealed up again. Now to do the other side. As you can see, the air conditioning compressor is back on. I've put the belt back on. Um, I've removed the lock that uh, was locking the, um, the crank. And uh, I've actually turned the engine over a couple of times just by hand, just with the um, uh, ratchet, just to make sure that there was nothing interfering, that the engine's turning over smoothly. It all feels good. So. Uh, Let's go back down underneath, and now I think it's time to put on the flywheel. All right, so I've got my nice brand new dual mass flywheel. Um, I didn't want to have to buy this, but uh, obviously I did, so um, I needed it. So let's uh, get it on, get it lined up with the uh, alignment pin, and uh, I've got some nice new flywheel bolts that should hold it into place. Like I said, these are new bolts. This is because these bolts are actually uh, stretch bolts that are single use only. So you can only use them once. Um, basically what I need to do is needed to bring them all up now to uh, 25 Newton meters. And then I need to turn them an extra 120 degrees after that. So uh, let me uh, build up to that. So I'm gonna use a crisscross pattern, tighten them up uh, to sort of probably just half of that or lower and then uh, and work my way up. But uh, what I have to do first is relock my flywheel again, the same way as I did when I removed the car. So uh, let's get my piece of strapping. All right, that was the easy bit. Um, I uh, my pressure plate is actually still not bolted uh, tight down because uh, um, 25 newton meters is not actually a lot for these things at the at this stage. 
What it does turn out to be a lot is the fact that you have to turn them, once you've got them all to 25 newton meters, which is what I have now, you then need to turn them all an extra 120 degrees on top of that 25 newton meters. So um, to do that, um, you don't have enough room in here and it's gonna be a lot of torque to be able to turn the thing all in one hit. So um, I'm gonna work my way around the pressure plate and um, basically the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to get a marker and I'm gonna mark the top of every bolt and then with um, my adjustable bevel, I've actually marked out 120 degrees. So I'm going to actually mark a spot on the flywheel that I need to turn that around to on next to every single bolt. So once I mark the top of each bolt, directly vertical, and then the 120 degree mark, I just need to turn that mark on the top around to the 120 degree, and I know I'm done on all of the bolts. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, using that method and just using a uh, crisscross method, that was quite simple to uh, get them all up to torque. Um, 25 newton meters isn't much, but that extra 120 degrees, that's really yanking on it with a nice long uh, extension. That's done, now it's time to uh, clean this up and then we need to start installing the clutch. And just as a side note, I'll just demonstrate, this is much stiffer to turn now. So um, comparing it to the old one, the old one had a lot of really loose slop um, and this one is, uh, is quite stiff to turn, so you can tell that, uh, just so you know what you sort of need to expect. I know it's hard to uh, fathom how much shot I talk I'm putting on it in a video, but uh, that gives you an idea anyway. Okay, uh, so now it's time to clean up the gearbox a bit, get rid of some of this gunk out of here, and replace the thrust bearing. So uh, I'll just uh, wipe it out. You need to be careful of the uh, the dust from the clutch. It is carcinogenic. Thankfully, this is covered in oil, so it's uh, it's not really flying around in the air. Put the old thrust bearing and uh, I've gone through, I've just given it a quick clean up in here and I've put a little bit of grease on the um, on this set of tube and on the spline of the gearbox. Um, you don't want much, just a very thin coating. I've just done a very thin smear on the inside of this as well, uh, on the new thrust bearing. And now it just, it just slides in and just clips into place. It's really easy. So uh, let's put this in and then we can get the gearbox back on the car. Well, that was a lot of wrestling to get the gearbox back on, but um, um, basically sort of wrestling it in, getting it close, getting it close, and then I put a couple of bolts in sort of hold it, and then you can sort of wrestle with it further and, and just keep getting closer. Uh, don't try and use the bolts to pull it in because it might not be square, but uh, by sort of holding it so it doesn't keep sort of coming out on this side and going back out the other side, so to hold it on this side uh, just lightly with a bolt, and then you can wiggle it, and this side gets a bit closer, tighten that one up, wiggle it, this one gets closer, and that's how I got the, uh, the gearbox back on again. Now it's time to uh, just put a bit of grease on the tip of the, uh, the clutch slave cylinder, and hopefully I can uh, bolt that back up again as well, and we can continue putting this back together. Well, I think I have finished bolting everything back on again. Everything is back to the way it was, minus oil. So I'll lower it down now, 
fill up the oil and uh, yeah, then see what we need to do about starting this thing. All right, so I pulled the fuse panel, which is down here in the kick panel of the car. And uh, before I start it, I want to actually disconnect the fuel pump so that I can turn it over a little bit and get some oil pressure up before I um, try and start it for good. So uh, the fuel pump is in this little book is C4. So let's get that. All right, fuel pump fuse is pulled. So now it is time to uh, try and turn it over. Fingers crossed. Sounds okay. Turns over okay, so um, let's uh, just double check the oil level, put the, um, the fuse back in again, and we'll see if it'll actually start. Oh, clutch is much lighter. Uh, let's try starting it. Something's not right. It's not idling. That's really strange. I've gone through the engine bay. I've checked everything. Doesn't seem like everything's not connected. I'm wondering whether it's just um, the computer has uh, recalibrated itself or something. I might just see if I can sort of idle it for a bit, drive it for a bit maybe and, and see, um, see if it corrects itself. Well, uh, yeah, let's just see. That's with my foot on the accelerator. As soon as I take my foot off, it dies. Weird. I might just take it for a quick drive and just see if that makes a difference. All right, crisis averted. I just took it for a drive. Now it revs, idles, it does everything it's supposed to fine. Um, I think I started it with the aircon on straight away as well, which probably didn't help. So um, that's it, it's fixed. All right, so uh, at least fixed two out of the three things that I planned on doing. The clutch is fixed and the rear main seal is fixed. Hopefully that's fixed my main leak that I had out of this car. I obviously didn't get to the IMS bearing. Um, I will be doing it. I will tackle it um, at a later date, but uh, as this is my daily driver, I need it on the road. I can't just wait for things. Um, I have actually had uh, somebody reach out since who's got some tools that uh, they're happy to lend me. So when I get to doing it, they'll have the proper IMS removal tool to uh, take it out. Overall, I can't say that it wasn't a, um, a stressful experience, um, particularly as this is my daily driver. Even though Harry is probably worth a lot more than this, um, for some reason, I'm not as stressed about Harry as I am about this, maybe because it is my daily driver. Also, it's more modern. The older stuff is just simpler to get your head around. Um, it is something you, you can do. It would have been a lot harder on jack stands. It, having the hoist makes life much easier. It all seems to have, uh, have worked out okay. So uh, clutch is replaced. Um, the, it's still right near the release point is still right near the top of the pedal So I may have to adjust the pedal because obviously the clutch is new now. So um, Anyway, um, if you enjoy this or if you have any comments or whatever, please uh, comment below like uh, the video Please and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, If you need any Porsche parts, make sure you check out PorschePartsByJeff.com uh, Compare prices there first and um, Help us out on Patreon if you want to watch videos daily. All right guys. See you next time